All right, welcome to the last of the content plan video series and I'm going to overview the entire process for you to show you how it all comes together, how to maximize this and the value it's going to have for the practice, for you, and most importantly, really, how the value it's going to have for your patients and the education of your community. So let's overview the whole process. If you haven't watched all of the videos preceding this, please do so. To bring this content plan together, it's important you have the background and the backdrop to everything we've already spoken about in, in before these videos. So I think you'll find that useful. So pause if you haven't, go back, watch, come back here. It's gonna be epic um, conclusion bringing together this information for you. All right, one, you've gotta have a theme. It doesn't matter whether your theme is family wellness or as we said in the first video, neuroscience or arthritis or whatever interest or specialization you have. What you do is you say, well, what's my theme? And in this case, I want everyone adjusted. What are my four key points of that theme, of this niche or area? It's gonna differ from person to person. And you may do this year after year after year because you are a family and wellness practice and therefore you may change these points every year. And that's perfectly okay. And then you say, well, if that is one of the four key points I have, what is the most important message I wanna share of those? And then you create these additional four elements. And then you write, this is a major blog, 1500 words, then you've got four to 800 words on those breakdown points. And here you then take those first four points and you break them into 12 videos because you're going to take three points. Just like you've gone one to four, you're going one to three, one to three, one to three, one to three. So you get 12 as you top break that down by three. And these, as they become educational, Inform, they then inform the videos that you're going to have because you're going to provide a shared message here. And the important thing about these videos is that they're a personal conversation like I'm having here with you. And then they're an extension of this information here. But what's important is that you're not repeating the exact same thing you wrote in a blog. You're having a conversation about it. You're bringing new information and insights into it. Your thoughts, maybe clinical experiences. The blog might have been theoretical in basis. Um, and now this video, an interest video, is conversationally based. So you move from, if you talk about primitive reflexes, you've got a theoretical explanation of um, primitive reflexes, and then you've got a breakdown of what the primitive reflexes are. But the video might be, hey, in my blog post, and you insert, uh, you know, which can be found uh, in the link below, um, I spoke about primitive reflexes, and so really, here's just a quick summary of what I spoke about. So then you reframe what primitive reflexes are. And then you say, but I want to give you an understanding of what this means for you, what this means for your child. And so let me tell you about an interesting case that we had here in the practice. And this child came in and you tell about the child. Obviously, don't give away personal uh, and private information and breach doctor-patient confidentiality. But you share enough information, no names or otherwise, and then you say, this was the situation. Then we began looking at, at this child through the lens of chiropractic. And this is how we address primitive reflexes. And this is what we did clinically. And here's the outcome. And in fact, not only here's the outcome, but here's why the outcome happened, because primitive reflexes have this role. So again, I'm being eclectic in that explanation, but you'll be able to say and understand from your own perspective how to bring that into a conversation across any area. So you can see you're taking a theoretical information, making it practical and utilizable by the people watching these videos so you then have this on your website and a blog post if you have one this on your youtube channel but also then your facebook channel and your instagram and then the way that you start bringing that together is to make sure that you're sending out emails to say hey we've just written a blog 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 we've just released a video we've just released a video and so every week you're outreaching to your patients outreaching and making sure the patients know and understand the information is delivered for them so that they can access it because they're not necessarily all going to be liking your social media and seeing this content but when you message them and they read your emails and you have a poster in the practice or something up on the wall or a handout uh, from, the, from the support team in the front desk, then you're starting to build that knowledge base. And by the way, you then say, hey, if you know anyone who's considering having a baby or has had a baby, or if there are any families in distress that you know that could benefit from chiropractic care, let them, give them access to this email. Share with them this video. Let them know about this blog. So the way that a content plan begins to have its influence is one, 
you share it within your practice and you demonstrate your knowledge, your skills, your expertise. You educate your practice so that they know and appreciate the value that you bring to the conversation. And then you tell them to share that so marketing begins. The education, MEP, has begun by the very writing of it and the sharing of it. But the marketing is say, please share that. And then you publicize your Facebook posts and make sure that you you know, pay for advertising to get greater exposure within your own database and then even out there in the community. And then, in addition to this, say, can I be a guest blogger? Can I be a guest podcaster? And you go take your message and share that out there. And then when you are on guest blogs or podcasts, you share that with your own database as well. And so you're getting on other people's platforms and then you're also expanding your own platform. So a content plan has a profound impact on educating your practice and community, positioning you as an expert, growing your practice, but most importantly, we've got an obligation and a responsibility to help people know, understand, and love and appreciate what chiropractic is, what chiropractic does, and the impact and significance chiropractic will have on their health, on their health and lives of their families, and its significance within the community. So a content plan is essential that every chiropractor utilizes, and I hope this has given you a framework, an opportunity to see its value, and if you would like more information, please feel free to reach out, and I'll do anything I can to assist and serve. So grateful to be able to help you. Appreciate you so much for what you do. And remember, as chiropractors, we are in this together. So let's continue to serve our profession. Thank you.